Hello everybody. Welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I have something a little bit different. Um, I have a master study that I already did and I'm just going to play a little bit with watercolor washes over it. This is a sketch of a painting by Hermann Herzog, an American painter from Germany in the 1800s and early 1900s. Um, and it's daybreak on a sto snowy morning. I sketched it on Canson 100% cotton. Um, I used a fountain pen revolution fountain pen. This is the Himalaya version one. And I used the platinum carbon ink. Okay. So, um, I also taped it off where the outer edge of the tape would create an 8x10. So if it's underneath a mat that's 8x10, it has a white border and then it would have the mat on top of that. So with this one, I'm going to kind of wash in over it with the squirrel mop. I'm a little hesitant, mainly because it's not something I've really done that much. I did that did it in a previous video, but my confidence isn't completely there with it. And um, I don't want it to look too illustrative, but we'll see. So that's um, a little bit of ultramarine, a little bit of Payne's Gray mixed into it. I feel like maybe I should get the lightest wash possible. I'm go very light. Where it's maybe the water. It was in the same room as pigment for a moment. And just a little bit of light ultramarine down here. So my approach to this is kind of, like I said, a little timid, um, not too sure color-wise what I'm going to go with, um, but you know, it's, it's just experimental. There's a little bit of raw sienna. That Platinum carbon ink is very waterproof, so that's really good. I'm going to lift back to the paper right there. I'm going to mix burnt umber and the ultramarine for a dark. Start going in a little bit over the foliage and the twigs. Sketching in that was really interesting. Um, I played a lot with the uh, different cross hatching, kind of seeing what would work, trying not to get too consistent of a pattern taking place and trying to build up different densities. So this is that burnt umber and ultramarine. grass areas. Let's see. I want to try some alizarin, but like I said, uh, I'm worried about getting too... In my mind, when I use the word illustration-like, I'm thinking of those bright 
pure colors of ultramarine uh, crimson over ink. And if you follow this channel, you know how dark I like to paint. Trying to pull up a little bit along the edges so it doesn't pill and get underneath that tape. A bit stronger ultramarine. That's Hammy jumping up. Um, somebody re requested in the comments um, to see the kitten. Uh, next time she is in here during a painting, I will uh, snatch her up and bring her underneath the camera. Okay, so I'm kind of just pushing this around. So most of my paper is wet at this point. Getting a little bit of the buckling taking place. I could have wet the backside and help that would help flatten it, but I did not um, I did not plan for that. Alright, a stronger mix of ultramarine and burnt umber. For dark. It was interesting sketching this one because um, I saw a lot of branches and trunks in this area that I didn't see initially and the time and dedication that he put to put something that really wasn't visible at first or maybe you know through the camera it wasn't really that visible um, it was astonishing. He's a, a really great painter. Hammy, please. I'm going to darken up these. But I also do have to remember that at the end of the day, it is um, pen ink and wash and it is going to have an effect to it. See, let's look at the camera. Oh, okay, it's looking pretty cool. I'm going to grab a little bit of lemon yellow, but I'm going to try to mellow it out with raw sienna. So a mixture of raw sienna and lemon yellow. this isn't too strong I may lift up a little bit there's a lot of interesting colors going on in the clouds um, with the sketching I just experimented with horizontal lines of different density to kind of represent different uh, tonal values within the clouds. Um, in my next video, I have another sketch that I did of a Herman Herzog where I took a different approach. Let me know what you prefer in the comments. By the way, of course, uh, please like, subscribe, follow, comment, all that other fun stuff. And if you ever want to support this channel, down below I have a link to the Patreon account. 
but simply liking, subscribing, and interacting is more than helpful with getting this channel going. All right, this is a mixture of ultramarine and alizarin. I'm getting a little bit bolder with the colors in the sky. Uh, feeding wet and wet, I have to make sure that I have kind of a higher pigment load, less water on the brush, so that I'm not um, going to get cauliflowers. Hammy, if you try to jump on there, I'm going to pause the camera because Hammy's about to do a stupid jump. Well, Hammy did the jump before I paused the camera, and he made it and didn't knock anything over. I'm pretty amazed. I really love cats. <laughs> Knocked over a <laughs> Uh, box that I use to um, set up still lives and take photos inside where I can direct the light at the still life so I can kind of um, paint from it. Now, this is at a Lizard Crimson Ultramarine, Ultramarine mix, still working with that. It's a nice color. Some of the uh, raw sienna ultramarine, sorry, raw sienna lemon yellow kind of shows up down in here as well. You have some green life in these spots. I'm going to cheat and grab a little bit of sap green. Lizarin and Ultramarine. At the lower level of the sky. I need a little bit grayer. If I do a little bit of burnt sienna in there to kind of neutralize that Ultramarine. All right, I think this is as far as I want to work this one. I'm going to pause it to do a dry off. Then I'll turn the camera back on to pull the tape off. And then from there, we'll sign it. We'll look at it underneath the mat. So I'm going to pause for a second. All right, so as I did the dry off, the paper did relax some, which was nice. Now, whenever you pull off masking tape, you want to pull away from the painting. I have noticed that some of this masking tape does pull some of this paper. Um, so you can take masking tape, kind of tack it a little bit against fabric and then put it down. And that will um, kind of help prevent that. So I'm going to pull down and away. And the crisp lines, the crisp edges that take place whenever you tape off something really does look nice. I um, used to do it for watercolor paintings, but 
I now I just take the 11 by 15 paper and paint over the whole thing and use the clips to stretch it and um, the mat covers everything but for this it really has a, um, a beauty to it Oops, see I pulled up some paper right there but that's fine Okay, now we need to, I like to write, sign it, so we, I like to put after, and I put the artist's name, and then below it, I put the title of the painting, and then if I know the date that it's from, I'll put that date as well. So this is after, Herman, Herzog. And it is daybreak on a snowy morning. All right, we'll see how a mat looks over it. By the way, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, you know, I do the different videos. Let me know what you like and what approaches you like. Um, do you like where I pause it? Do you like where I do the live videos and talk all the way through? Kind of trying different things out. All right, there's a mat just sitting over it. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. Actually, I'll just take it off and hold it. And there you go. All right. I'll be back with another video with another um, master study that I did, and we'll do a watercolor over that. Hope you enjoyed. I'll talk to you soon.